extremely rich like but then okay i want to honestly let me, can i just say something and this is from someone who has recently entered the world of influencing i want to tell you this now you guys should not compare your lives to people online at all because their at life all. is a lie <laughs> <laughs> lie them a blood clot lie it's not real like it's not real it's, it's all it's all fake i will tell you a story of when i went out with an influencer how about that i went to a uh it was like a day party it was a day it was one of those day party events and i invited my friend and my friend happened to be friends of a quite a well-known influencer so i said okay cool so obviously I've, and i came with my cousin so it was me my cousin the girl and the influencer and the influencer your favorite influencer your favorite influencer mm. your favorite influencer mm -hmm. so i see them honestly cool people's cool girl so the guy that had the party I knew him, so it was free entry for me and friends. Before we got there, we could have walked it. Yeah. It could. It was a 10 minute walk. Honestly, I'm very, very happy to walk things. I'm very, very happy to take taxi, whatever. I'm very happy to take train. I'm, I'm very, very happy exactly. to take I'm not here. bougie. It's not that, oh yeah, we need to get in. Um, uh, Sis, I will be. I will jump on the train. Mm. I'll jump on the bus. I will jump I'll, on the bus. That, that's, that, I will that's, jump on the bike. I will jump on the bike. <laughs> I will use the scooter. You know, I'm not like that girl. Yeah. So I said, it's a you know, it's a seven minute walk. Even it's not far. I want. It's not a party where we're wearing high heels either. Exactly. It's a day party, so you know, it's casual, cute, flats. I was wearing Doc Martens. The influencer now was like, "Oh no, I'm feeling. Can we take taxi? I don't want to walk. I want to take taxi." Why can't you pay for it? And me being me, you know me, I'm very abrupt. So I said, sis, you're really, everybody say walking, you're shouting taxi, but I'm not seeing you bringing out your phone. To book the taxi. To book the cab. So obviously because me, when I, when I bring people out, I feel very responsible for them. So I'm yeah. going to make sure you have a nice night. I'm going to make sure. So I said, I will pay for the taxi. The taxi was a five or whatever. But I found it interesting that you're the only one shouting for taxi. taxi but you're not doing anything about it. Your, your phone is still warming in your, in your handbag. Yeah. Cool. In your Gucci handbag. Okay, cool. <laughs> cool. So we enter the place. We step into the scene. That specific club was doing two for one cocktails. Two for one here. Yeah. Two for one two cocktails. Two for the price of one. Yeah. yeah. So I'm now with my cousin. My friend is with her influencer friend. Me and my cousin always drunkards. We always get two two for ones. Mm -hmm. So we have two drinks. So we'll get each. two of the same drinks each. Four for the price of two. Yeah, four for the... <clears throat> God will bless your mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> so we've now got the two two for ones. I am now overhearing in the bar with my friend and influencer. Very popular influencer. And basically, clearly, they didn't know the, the functionalities of two for one. one yeah. That in order for you to have two for one, you have to buy the same drink. Yeah. So... Sis was like, oh, can I have a strawberry daiquiri, daiquiri. and a, a porn star martini? So the guy's like, okay, that's 22 pound. Da, 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 da. Obviously, my f uh, my friend is saying, no, that's supposed to be two for one. The guy's like, no, it's two for one if it's the same drink. Sis said, send the other drink back. <laughs> Sis said, send the other drink back. So, you have me and my cousin with two two for ones, and you have these two sharing, sharing one, one drink. drink. It's, it's, it's the shame for me. And know? it's not one of those tall pina it's colada one glasses. Small drink like this. It's a small <laughs> drink. They were doing past the parcel with the one drink, and I could not believe. No, but honestly, like, oh, like, oh, I think, I think, do you know what? I think if it was a normal person, uh -huh. okay, if, across the board, that's just embarrassing, yeah. But if it was a normal person, I'll say okay. But these influencers, you have in a Gucci the Gucci, bag, <laughs> in the like, you have a Gucci, in the bag, Gucci. You know, a drink, you a drink, the drink. I swear to God, for, to buy the two, it wasn't like we were in Central where sometimes they'll sell they'll, drink they'll, for eighteen pounds. No, but these be the same babies that'll be in Mayfair. But the thing is, you know, one thing I, I, I think about influencers, yeah. I feel like sometimes they they like to benefit off other people. So like when you're around an influencer more time, yeah, some influencers want you to pay for their stuff. I don't know if you get what I mean. Like, yeah. 
you're gonna get to a time where you're around influences and you just like they they actually influences sometimes again this is not all but some influences actually leech off other people so they they they're they're friends with specific people for a certain reason and no i'm not like i'm not even talking about how, you can even be less than but it's like okay because i have this platform you now have to pay for my shit that actually is oh no life. way yeah so they feel like they're it's entitled like, to your money. Have, okay, let me say this, yeah. Most influencers, yeah, always have that one sidekick that's always, like, beneath them. If you actually look at a lot of influencer dynamics, yeah, there's always, like, a sidekick. Oh, okay. And I feel like sometimes that sidekick has to, like, prove themselves. So there's a, there's an insecurity that they might have. Who might have? That the sidekick might have that that obviously the influencers their core cool friend and yeah, they so want to like be around them. Yeah, so it's like you have to now pay for their stuff and oh, I'll get the cab and it's like you become like a little runaround. So that's why these influencers. No way. What? No way. What have you done? When you actually look at influencer dynamics, that's actually what happens more time. There's always like a little sidekick. Not all the time. That's really sad. That reminds me of a certain specific dynamic. Yeah. Which I'm not gonna say. But definitely, there was a very influencer. It's in most dynamics, it's really though. Sad. When you actually think about it, it's in, it's in most. It is. There's always that, that one person that's a bit running around another person. I don't think anyone is entitled to anyone because of who they are. That's absolutely wrong. Like, one thing about me, Jordan Woods and Kylie, it's everywhere. There's always that one person that's always like be- beneath, beneath someone. Like the ru- and it's like you have to prove yourself. Nah, that's some bullshit. I feel sometimes an inf- the, the the person is higher. It's like you expect that other person, person, but it's not reciprocated. Is it that it's reciprocated or it's not? Fifty-fifty, because I feel like in general, being someone's sidekick in general, you benefit. Jordan yeah, Woods got just for the just for you, the yeah yeah like you, there's some form of benefit. But just the for the time, fact that that person is that person. Okay, as as a rebound, you also get some type of. Cloud, yeah, yeah, Cloud. yeah, be with that person. But yeah. that, it's like you're now paying for certain things that you shouldn't be paying for. You're running around and doing things like, okay, we need to get a cab. You don't want us booking it. You turn into an assistant. <gasps> Not the assistant. So I feel like sometimes that's why influencers, like, you go out and it's like, it's the person you least expect that actually has the most money. It's very true, you know. It is very, it's very weird. true. Oh my God, that's so sad. I really hope that women, you know, that are insecure or going through stuff they don't yeah. f- that's how you have relationships and friendships that like someone is being used yeah and because they feel like that person is higher than them or they feel like you know have you ever been in a friendship circle where you constantly feel like you have to prove yourself that's what i'm saying especially within females so imagine now you have clout on top of that wow i re- and that funny enough that reminded me of the of the group that i was in yeah. at school the yeah. dynamic i had there was one mixed race she wasn't even mixed race the girl was lighty yeah and i remember everybody like she i didn't know how she done it she was the queen bee like, like everybody does everything be every Body. I used to be jealous of girls like that because I. If you I, want her, if she want your friend, nobody can be your friend. Like if she fell out with you, everyone fell out with you. If she didn't talk to you, you didn't talk to her. If you were friends, I don't. How did, how did people become like that? I'm, I'm like, well, how interested in the, the first psychology. Day of school, everybody knows nobody. Then uh-huh. somehow one person always becomes queen bee. Like she was literally, and I think it's to this day, I'm quite interested on the psychology of Queen Bee because to this day, I don't know how she done it. Like she was literally so up there like she was that girl you had you you wanted to be her friend yeah like and the thing is because i was in her circle yeah. like i was in a circle of friends if she fell out with one person nobody can speak to you if she said we're going this to this place on everyone's saturday going. everyone's going if she said she i remember and the thing is again like you were saying she's sorry she was the one that was at the time oh can i borrow this can i borrow this if she there was a time, I remember I was having a conversation growing up that somebody asked for, she asked somebody for their trainers. Yeah. And the person said, no. Oh, no, I, I need it. She goes, I need those trainers. So the girl walked to, from her crib. To make sure she to, had. To, to, to make sure that she had trainers that didn't belong to her. I, like, to this day, I'm very interested in that psychology no, of Queen Bee. And you know what it is, yeah? But even till, even, and uh, do you think about Queen Bee? I feel like Queen Bee never dies. Just, even at our age, yeah? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. It still exists, but yeah. it's just, now it's within the influence of what there's the Queen Bees and then there's the little yeah. thingies that when we see the big influences, all that. And the thing is, yeah, I just feel like it's everybody wanting to be somebody they're not. Mm-hmm. 
it's the same thing with internet. Like the, with the internet, people that are not influencers want to be these influencers. Mm-hmm. But I still also don't understand how one person, like literally, like even with um, who can give me an example of a big influencer? The Nella Rose. If Nella was to say something, I don't know. Um, Oh, I don't think it really works with her, but let's say Nella Rose will say something, yeah. People people might jump on it and be like, you know, because Nella said, we don't like this person. That doesn't work. I need someone else. Uh, someone else, like big... Kylie Jenner. Yeah, Kylie Jenner, okay. When Kylie Jenner didn't like, when she spoke about Snapchat's new new um, feature, do you uh-huh. remember? She doesn't use it anymore. She, and then Snapchat plummeted. I remember. remember. So it's like it's the same thing. It's that like everybody is following. Like ev- I don't know, I, but I still don't understand how like how we all get sucked I'm so into it. it. I'm so it because even me and the thing is it's so weird because I've always been quite a uh, secure in myself and and uh, not a dominant woman, but a, a quite. I'm not usually those type of dynamics you would think happens. Yeah. To just insecure, timid, introverted Everyone. people. Bro, even me, I got sucked into it. Sis was running the thing, like, bro. But just even now, I feel like you can easily be... Imagine now you're now in a room with, like, let's say some real OGs, and they're like, do you know what? We're going to go here tonight. And deep down, you don't want to go. Mm-hmm. Are you not going to go because the OGs are going there? It's true. It's like, true. And that's what I'm saying. It's so bad, because even till this day, no matter how... Um, secure what you secure you are as a person. It's so easy to get influenced nowadays, and I think that's why it was. But, but I think back in the day it was worse because it would be small things like even with me, I feel like I was a bit of a queen bee, but I wasn't the queen bee. Mm-hmm. Or maybe I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, and it's a thing whereby, like, let's say being in that queen bee position, yeah, I was. I wasn't even that girl. Mm-hmm. Actually, no, in a di- I went to a new school. And I think in that new school, I was, a, I was a bit of a queen bee. In my previous school, I wasn't the only queen bee, but do you get what I mean? And I feel like even being a queen bee in itself is a hard job. Not you talking about the, the struggles of being the queen bee. No, but it is a hard job because you have to keep up this persona that isn't even really you. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I mean? Because even when you think about it in school, everyone doesn't know who they are, but you have to be this, yeah, girl, so people can respect you. To respect it, yeah. And it's like, at the end of the day, everyone wants to be something they're not. Even the queen bee herself isn't who she says that she is. Everyone's just trying to fit into a persona, definitely. But guys, 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 I haven't even welcomed my guest today. I'm so rude. I'm so rude. Guys, I want to introduce you to someone phenomenal. She is a content creator. She is a YouTuber. And I have the pleasure of calling this girl one of my friends. Yes, this is Miss Maggie Mayhem. Hey, guys. It's your girl, Maggie Mayhem. And sis, it's a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Honestly, I know that was was such a transition, but I have to introduce my good sis to the motherfucking show. Talk to me. How has your week been? How have you been? Your mental. It's a new year, mm-hmm. first of all. How has the first week of 2022 dealt with you? Do you know what it is? It doesn't feel like it's been a week. It feels mm-hmm. like it's been a month. I don't uh, know. Do you already, feel that? I do feel a bit drained already. I feel like, damn, like, there's a lot. Like, I was actually talking to um, Kajovi. Mm-hmm. We both know who Kajovi is, right? Mm-hmm. And I said to her, oh my God, it's only day seven and so much has happened in such a short time like mm-hmm. so so far the year has been amazing and the year is going to be amazing um but I, as i said like it's only one it's only been one week and i feel like damn like there's a lot to take in because obviously mm-hmm. my birthday is next week maybe that's also another thing that's also like on my head but my week has been good um what have i done this week do you know somebody asked what you've done this weekend? You don't it's know like, what you've done. I don't even know. I'm I don't just, even know. But I'm just existing. I'm, I'm just existing. <laughs> and, and the thing is about, like, there's, there's just a lot. But um, I'm excited to see what this year brings, man. How has your week been? Honestly, I wish I could say it was productive, but it really wasn't. Honestly, I started the I started the beginning of the year like, yeah, let's <laughs> fucking have it. Let's fucking have it. Let's yeah. go. Honestly, I need to you know, I said it last yeah. week that like, oh I need to be skinny, I need to do this. Ask me if I've if I've been if I've gone to the gym. It's day eight. I haven't answered, I'm gonna be honest. No, but I asked you, I asked you if you made your membership. I have not asked I, you. I, I made the go. membership, hundred percent. So why are you not going The yet? membership is still cooking and here I am eating biscuits. <laughs> why you have why have you not gone yet? I don't know. <laughs> 
listen because Maggie, where have you been? You told me that you were gonna be my uh, my uh, accountability I've partner. I've been going to the gym though, and now I see you, and every time so I see you, I'm like, like, let me be quiet. Carry you from your house then. Yes, you should be like, Joyce, you go to the gym today. <laughs> I need, no, I need accountability. Do, okay, I'm gonna be on you then, like pop up, pop up yeah, every so day. Yes, be on my dick because I've not been. Wow, I've not entered, and the, the membership is cooking there. You're one of them girls that will start the do end the year bigger than you even started because you're not. Hello, man, Jen. God forbid, <laughs> back to send I repeat no, that because, one. No, because yo, what the hell? You no, don't no, need no, 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 no. I'm gonna be skinny. I'm Amen. Gonna, no, but you know, the, the fruit and that has been. I've been eating fruits and that, you know, like blueberries and that, and, and strawberries and the strawberries and and, and, and the blackberries and the cranberry juice. I've so. You know I love mixed drinks, but no, seriously, honestly, I've been and I haven't been drinking too much as well because yeah. I know that alcohol has really been in my system and so I didn't wait. Detox. Actually, uh, finally, you said you don't drink on Saturdays, right? I do drink on Saturdays. <laughs> so that was, what, what was no. That? I mean, I don't. I'm not drinking today, but I only ever drink really when I'm on the show. Oh, okay. But alcohol cuts weight. Maybe she's gonna alcohol detox. It cuts a lot of weight. I was thinking that, but do you know what? This is like I said. This is my first episode that I haven't drunk. Really? I, 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 you are the only reason why I'm not drinking is because I'm trying to bounce off your energy and you don't drink. But I feel like even if I don't drink, people still think I'm drunk anyway. I know, because you're just a crazy motherfucker. She's just a crazy motherfucker. I made motherfucker. him for a reason. Maggie made him. This Period. is... <laughs> Ma- mayhem! Guys, I have, a, I have a new segment for you, though. I, you're going to be the first person to ever be in this segment. Okay. So, so basically, we are having a new segment in which we are going to be challenging all the new co-hosts to a cultural knowledge challenge. A what? It is a cultural knowledge challenge. So we are testing your cultural knowledge skills. And this segment is called... Are you smart? smart? (laughs) Maggie, are you smart? Sis, you've set me up, you know. You've actually come to set me up. Like, I don't even know what the hell... What? Maggie, are you smart? I'm smart. Are you sure? I'm a graduate. You're graduates. I'm a graduate. Educated. Yeah. So, here's the name of the game. Each co-host has one minute to answer 10 questions. So you as well? Or just me? You. Okay. Me, I'm the host. You're the co-host. <laughs> <laughs> you're the co-host. Clearly, I'm not smart. It was even you as well. <laughs> I would answer questions that I, I I wrote down. Okay. So, right. Are you ready for your 10 questions? I'm going to put the timer on right now. So, it, it's culture questions. Culture questions. Cultural knowledge. What do you mean by that? Culture. Anything. To TV. News. Music. Anything. Okay. You have one minute, and you can pass if you want to pass. So you can keep bringing in questions, innit? Yeah, okay. you have to get. You can either you can either think about a question or say, "I don't know." Next, okay. we we'll go for the next one. So, <laughs> when the time ends. that thing gives me anxiety. That Are you ready? Okay. One minute. Let's go. Your time starts now. Who did Forbes name the youngest self-made billionaire in two thousand nineteen? Kylie Jenner. Correct. Which pop star is the godmother of both Ethan John's sons? Pass. In 2022, Netflix aired a reality show that required all participants to be celibate. What was it called? What? In oh, the, the the island thing. Yeah, what's it called? Love in Paradise. No. Pass. Too hot to handle. That's Which it. fruit is Man. used to make a porn star martini? What? Which fruit is used to make Strawberry. a porn star... No. Pass. Alcohol. Which cartoon has the character Phil, Chucky, Pass. and Tommy? Rugrats. Finish the li- lyrics. One in one wami. One in one wami. I'm in San Francisco, Jamie. Correct. What's the capital of Scotland? Wells. <laughs> I don't know. Pass. Edinburgh. Which fast food company used the advertising slogan, I'm loving it? McDonald's. Correct. Who What's plays Tommy that? Shelby in Peaky's? Nah, that that was fun. Can we do can we do another round? That was that was warm. So you got to question eight. <laughs> so you answered out of ten out of out of eight. One got like three right. Two. <laughs> no, I didn't. I got I'm loving it. I got Oh yeah, three. <laughs> yeah. So you got Kylie Jenner being the youngest self made uh, billionaire. You had um the lyric and I'm loving it. So that's that's three out of ten. Out of eight, I didn't get to ten. Okay, should we should we should we do to ten? Yeah, let, let's see the other two. Okay, who plays Tommy Shelby in Peaky Blinders? I don't know. Pass. Cillian Murphy. How many times has Chris, Tristan Thompson cheated on Khloe Kardashian? Uncountable. Do you know what? I'm gonna give you that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Tak ho chlapce! No, Chloe, she needs to, she needs to, she needs to pack that man's bags. But you know what, yeah? Do you know what it is? I, I actually don't blame him. Sorry to just quickly take it that way. Go but on. I feel like Tristan just needs to accept who he is. It's that simple. Facts. Like, I feel like he just needs to tell Chloe, listen, I'm, I'm a poly- polygamous man. Polygamous. Polygamous man. And that's it. Like, it is what it is. And do you know what? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because... There's a lot of men who are polygamous exactly. and women are happy in those relationships. I remember I met one guy at a mixer yeah. and he told me that he had two girlfriends. Okay. And the thing is, not going to lie, the boy was fine. Yeah. He was mighty fine. And I really thought about being number three. I'll be honest. I really, <laughs> because, like, they actually, they will make time for, for all their women. Equally, yeah. And everyone knows the deal. You don't need to be confused. You don't need to lie. You don't need to be doing underneath, overneath. Yeah. You know what it is. But, again... I agree with you. Stop trying to be something you're not. Exactly. You're not a family man. You're not a monogamous man. Just and I personally mm-hmm. feel like I feel like how like do you know love is so stupid. Let me just mm-hmm. put it that way, right? And I feel like Chloe is so she's so in love with you because love makes you dumb. Of course, whereby you accept things that you never accept before. That's what love is. You, mm-hmm. you sacrifice and then you accept things that you normally you wouldn't even accept, right? I feel like if Tristan wants to be honest and be like, do you know what? I'm a I'm a polygamous man. Poly- polygamous man mm-hmm. i feel like she'll accept it and mm-hmm. muslim men are polygamous they're allowed for yeah. wives mm-hmm. and people are comfortable with it in general so if islam permits it and in the bible there was many men that were polygamously whatever the word is mm-hmm. i feel like Tristan just needs to be honest with it he does he does or he needs help because there's a lot of people who have sexual addiction as well that's not so, you think that he needs help for that th- there's some people that have sex addiction like i can't remember i've heard of several celebrities going into rehab for like addiction to sex yeah okay but then sexual addiction is di- like then why don't you have sex with your wife consistently then no but sexual addiction in terms of being sexual with multiple, with multiple people yeah that's that a like- demon <laughs> <laughs> that one that, that's the spirit of that's lust that is lust that's, that's a that's a lust for, we need to pray for Tristan that the spirit of lust leaves him in Jesus amen. name amen Chloe I does, pray for you as well because damn them soul trust ties them yeah. soul ties strong <laughs> You know when the soul time becomes, a, you know when the soul time becomes a soul chain, bro. She, sis is locked down. Sis, that man is bringing a whole lot of demons into your nah, house, man. Sis, you need sis to pray. Is down. I feel so so sorry for her. I don't. But yes, well done. You got four out of ten, and we're gonna have a leaderboard. So guys, remember, Maggie got four out of ten. Let's see who can beat you in the next couple of weeks. I feel like people are gonna. I, I feel like I'm not in touch with culture, so I, I just hope I'm not the bottom. Okay. I want to be at least in the middle. That's why I need to hang. We'll see where you are at the end of the at the end of the season. Amen. I <laughs> <laughs> said I'll be the head on the tell. So before Simply Earth's essential oils, I had no idea what essential oils were about. On top of that, they were so expensive, and I wasn't sure if I was buying the real deal or just a knockoff. Simply Earth's essential oils recipe box helped me gain confidence and clarity to make my home toxin free, and they can help you too. The recipe box has four pure organic essential oils and six recipes created by certified aromatherapists. This monthly subscription box is super affordable and their essential oils are 100% pure. Yes, 100% pure. Each subscription is only $39.99. Yes, honey, save your coins. Have fun making your home toxin free with Simply Earth's essential oil recipe box. Plus, get a free 80 mil essential oil diffuser when you subscribe using my URL, www.simplyearth.com slash madam. That's www.simplyearth.com slash madam. Right, we are going to move on to hot topics of the week. Now, a lot of things have been happening this week and we're going to talk about it. So first of all, musically... There has been a lot of new music coming out this week, including The Weeknd with Dawn FM and Gunna DS Forever. Have you heard of any of the new music this week? Nope. Don't tell me. Are you, you're one of those that you don't listen to secular music. I don't listen to secular <laughs> Do you know, I actually don't listen to secular music. I actually don't. Not because it's a problem. Mm-hmm. I just don't find enjoyment in it. Because when I used to listen to secular music, it used to be bashment. Are you a bashment girl? I, I, used, I used to be a bashment girl. So when obviously I stopped listening to especially that genre, but now because of TikTok, actually, I'm actually getting back into the, mm-hmm, into the swing. Because so like, things. But the thing is, when you when I'm out, like I know the songs, but I just don't listen to them on my day to day. On my day. It's so yeah. funny because me and, me and Maggie were filming one day and she was in the car. And um, obviously, you know when your uh, headphones leave out 
it, like you can hear the music. She yeah. was listening to I Surrender. <laughs> like it was one proper yeah. gospel. And she was just in her zone now, just looking at her thinking, this music ain't jumpy. <laughs> <laughs> if I guess my spirit jumpy, I guess my spirit jumpy. I don't know. I actually don't know why. You know, I never, I never used to even like gospel music. But do you know what? Yeah, I must say, yeah, I never used to like gospel music until I started dabbling into the R and B side, yeah. the hip hop side of um, Christian music. Yeah, there's there's actually a, the Afrobeat side to yeah. Christian. Like I used to think, like it was, it was just like. Hallelujah. I went to a church literally two days ago, right? Mm-hmm. I visited my friend's church and the pastor really said, he said that the devil created rap music. No. And he said that that there's no rap music in heaven. When I heard that, I was like, this is actually the problem because I used to grow up thinking that gospel music was only one genre. One genre, like, yeah. But it's an expression. Music is an, is an expression. Not, uh-huh. every, not everyone is the same. Absolutely. But yeah, there's some sick, sick gospel artists, you know, that pop up, do Afrobeat, rap, drill. I love gospel drill. Do you know what? I've heard a couple, I've heard a couple drill gospel songs that I must say I'm actually all right with, you know. Yeah, they, they make you feel chingy chingy like. <laughs> like you want to, you want to, do you want to you want to drill for grass. You yeah. want to you walk, you want to go in the streets yeah. of Jesus. Yeah, but yeah, no, I actually... Have you been seeing that woman on the TikTok where she's like, oh, break dancing is of the devil. That when they are popping and locking, they are popping in. That's what the dance that they do in hell. No, I haven't yet. Oh my God. Like, I, do you know how funny that woman is? She basically said that um, break dancing is of hell, is of the devil. She said that weave, that it's a, it's a demonic thing. That any, She it's said that anybody yeah. that wants to be a comedian, <laughs> you're going to laugh your way to hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> What? She said, if you want to do a stupid job like comedy, if you want to be a comedian, you will laugh your way to hellfire. When I saw that, I thought, no, this is the problem, man. No, but they're actually, but thinking that people, that, as much as it's funny, it's actually very much No, because the church, the church was full with people hearing that bullshit. And some people take it as truth. And they will take I mean? it as truth. But when God has called you to make your millions doing uh, Kevin Hart. Do you G- get it? Christian Kevin Hart, you're no, here but listening. Even the Bible is in itself, like there's some stories that you, you're reading like raw, like, like that. Like, fam, sometimes the Bible, like when you read the Bible, yeah, even when Christ used to speak, you, Comedy. Comedy. Pure comedy. Jesus is a funny man, you He's know. He's a very He's funny com- man. I never I don't know what God they've been telling you about, but my God is really a funny God. There's sometimes where I'm like, where I see when I hear Jesus talking, I'm like, mm, attitude boy, okay. Like you he really it? come with the attitude. He's you know, a, I am that I am. Like a huge He's huge. A, he said, like, I am that boy. I am. He's an attitude boy. You lot need to know, like, he's just not, you lot really come and make Jesus sound so boring. Do you get it? Keep, Peter don't cut off someone's ear. Like, the, the, the Bible has some gangster people. Do you get yeah, it? Real like, gangsters, real drillers. But I don't know. I, I think a... religious, religiosity just makes it sound a bit boring and, and unappealing to people. I feel like religion across the board of it is, religion across the board has killed, like, I don't know. I don't even know what it is. Like, it's just irritating. Like, mm-hmm. even when it comes to, like, let's say Islam, yeah. They've turned Muslims to be these bad people, like kill, mm-hmm. kill, kill. And as much as, like, but Islam is a religion that promotes peace. Absolutely. Do you get what I mean? But it's like, I don't understand where people got this whole, like, people actually take something that was meant for good and they literally, like, they build They poison what, it, yeah. They poison it and they build their own thing and turn it out to be evil. Like, it's actually. It's, and they take one bit of the Bible, one bit of scripture, and then they build all these doctrines on it that were not the, the initial intention of the word. They bring culture on it. And the thing is, yeah, most of these aunties that be talking, they're really not on what they're talking about. Like, when you're really sleeping with Tolu's dad and Dope's dad and all these things, and then, oh, you're, you're cursing this one's woman and da 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 da. And it's like, what are you actually talking about? Like, do you know, church has one of the most wicked, it has like, you'll find the most wicked people in churches. I want to talk about the aunties that want to talk about that will be holding all these marriage prayer meetings that will be holding all this ah you know yeah this is how a wife is supposed, supposed to be, be uh, you know your wife, as a woman, I heard somewhere, somewhere I had you know you're not supposed to be doing all this thing you shouldn't go to cinema you shouldn't be doing this but auntie where's your man at but auntie how many baby daddies you got Uncles in my DMs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I see when I come into your house, uncles really looking me up and down like, Rah. You've really grown. Aunties would, would talk about, oh, you should dress like this because, you know, yeah. 
Auntie, when Auntie. I come to your house in my, in my short skirt, uncle's really looking at me. To your husband is really yeah. greeting me. Some of these aunties, their husbands haven't slept with them in years, you know, because you're this. You know, let's actually talk about let's it. Let's talk about it. Some of these aunties, you're just really bitter. Your husband hasn't spoken to you in years, but you wear makeup. You guys wear makeup. and no, no, no. You that, do highlights. Yeah. Why are you doing highlights? That's exactly why your man ain't sick. What's, 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 what's the review? That's one? why they ain't checking for you. <laughs> that's why your man ain't checking for you. And I feel it's, like, boy, that's, I think that's actually, that's, I think that's, I feel like African aunties didn't take care of themselves as much as they could. I feel like they, I feel like they didn't evolve. That, that's the thing. They didn't evolve. At one point, their standard of beauty and what they were used to is what was accepted in those day and ages, number one. Obviously, back in the day, Obviously, you did look after your body. You, you clearly you changed. You have children. Fair enough. Fair enough. But then I feel like a lot of times that then those insecurities now try to fall onto the next generation, yeah. and you're like, oh, why are you wearing your lashes like that, so, Auntie? Just tell me, just ask me who my plug is. I will send it to you. Do you, like, no, do you actually get it? Like, why is that your hair like that? Just tell me, ask me who my style is. I will send it to you. We're, we're not, we're not doing synthetic anymore, Auntie. <laughs> take the synthetic. Take the synth- <laughs> stop. Sh- Ah. You keep spraying that same wig with oil sheen. Oh, the ones that we talk about makeup, but your eyebrows are tattooed. And it's like... Your eyebrows are tattooed. And you know what? That really irks me. Let me talk about that. Because there are a lot of women... And again, I love my women. Yeah. There are a lot of um, uh, women that don't know how to do makeup. And they bash women that do Do. makeup. And I think that's very, very... Like, oh, yeah, you will never catch me. Why would I be wearing all that stuff on my face? I'm a natural babe. (sighs) <sighs> do you know what yeah when it comes to like when it comes to women uh, to me it gives me very pick me because it's mm. like okay that's great now what oh and I, I wouldn't wear that much makeup just say you don't know how to do just the say makeup. you don't know how, and, and we will help you and some people actually don't look nice with makeup and it's that's true, that. yeah. like you're you're natural and you look pretty natural but if you had makeup on you don't look nice with makeup there's some people that can do both mm-hmm. i'm not gonna lie to you your man's not gonna want to see you every day with a plain face and that's that Mm-hmm. Like natural babe till the day you die, that's great for you. But sometimes switch it up, mm-hmm. and it's the same thing. Even like, do you know, for me, yeah, having a body, yeah, ah, uh, you're just bum. No, like you, 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 all you, all you have is just bum. Okay, but where's yours? <laughs> like people say, it as if it's as if it's it's supposed to make me feel some type of way. Like mm-hmm. that's a flex. Do you, I don't I don't even get what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like the same way somebody can have like their face card can be valid, and they can wear that with their with their with their pride mm-hmm. I can also wear my pad yeah like my body's good and I your work on it my good yeah like, people make it seem as if nah it's either face or nothing nah bitch like it's I got e- body it's everything baby like it's girls everything. girls do that whole thing I just don't get it like I love women but sometimes when women really want to be mad they can be really mad I'm telling you I'm telling you anyways we're going to pray for our, our, our aunties and our good their sisters but we're going to move on um, the next topic we're talking about is Love Island's Molly Way bar- blasted after Thatcherite comments on poverty and hard work. Love Island runner up Molly May used a podcast appearance to explain that, well, we all have the same 24 hours and that those who work harder tend to do better. Speaking to the Diary of a CEO podcast last month, Hugh said, you're given one life and it's down to you to do what you do what you want to do with it. When I've spoken about that in the past, I have been slammed a little bit with people saying, it's easy for me to say that. You've not grown up in poverty. You not, you've not grown up with the majority money struggles. So for you to sit there and say that we all have the same 24 hours, it's incorrect. Hugh added, and I'm like, but technically, what I'm saying is correct. We do. So understand that we all have different backgrounds and we are all raised in different ways and we do have different financial situations. But I do think if you want something enough, you can achieve it. She is big under fire this week because a lot of people are saying that she is not in a place and privilege. She's not in a place to have those opinions about people ha- having the same 24 hours because she is from a privileged background. What do you feel about that? Um, so me, okay, what in general, like when it comes to things like that, I don't care. However, mm-hmm. if I'm to add my opinion, yeah, I feel like sometimes, yeah, of course it will have freedom of speech because you know people are always gonna come, freedom mm-hmm. of speech, but at the same time, yeah, I feel like sometimes it's not about what you say, but it's who says it. Do you get mm-hmm. what I mean? Exactly. It's like 
what you what you said could have been right, but it's the fact that it's coming out of your mouth that mm-hmm. makes it totally invalid. Mm-hmm. Reason being, again, like if somebody that literally came up from the gutter and actually lived what they're like, do you know there's that thing of live what you say? If you've lived mm-hmm. what you've what, what you've said, then you can say that. But the reason why I also don't I didn't like what she said is because. She started her sentence by saying, I know people have different da 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 da. And you add the but. Yeah. Would, and but, then your but just literally flip. Like it, it erases everything that you've just mm-hmm. claimed that you recognize. It doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And her thing really pissed me off is because it's true. Like when I, was re- when I was looking at some of the Twitter comments, some people, yeah, we have the same 24 hours, but people have different responsibilities. Absolutely. Do you get what I mean? As I heard, like she lives in a two parent household where both parents work. I, for, even me, for example, I live in a single parent household. Therefore, mm-hmm. my mom has to not take care of three kids. Mm-hmm. So clearly, we don't have the same 24 hours. No. Because if I'm working, automatically, I'm going to want to help out my mom. Mm-hmm. Your parents both work money made. Like, you grew up, yeah, you weren't the, rich, you weren't the richest, but you, your parents were stable enough to take care of you and your... And your and her your parents were stable enough for her to, to move to Manchester on her own. What? Because she, she, she spoke about it, because I, I actually watched the whole interview and she was talking about her background. So she actually had moved to Manchester when she was, you know, I believe she was like 18 or 19. And she was like, yeah, I had to graft. Like, come on, like, oh, there was you sometimes, did- of course your money, your parents are sending you pocket money. Your your parents work for government. They have a very finance, they have a very stable job. Let me tell you this, by the time you're moving out, there's enough money to cover you. Mm-hmm. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Especially white people. White people are not like us black people. They're smart in everything mm-hmm. they do. They, they actually have thought process. You're not going to move out and you're not going to get a house unless you can back up the fact that you can own that house. Mm-hmm. A lot of, like, more time, yeah, when you look at black households, people are 27, 28, 29, still in their parents' house. Still in their parents' house. What are you, at 18, you're moving out 18. Do you know how young you are at 18? Yeah, she moved out. She moved out. So because clearly, she wanted to, she wanted to, I don't know, fulfill her dreams or something like that. But my issue is this. Molly May is not in any position to speak about people's experiences because one, she's never lived them, and two, her upbringing ma- makes her to fail to understand it. That's the issue I have. There are some people who, yes, like for who live in uh, parent, uh, you know, whole parent homes. They have their parents. They um, were stable, but they have enough friends or they have enough. Uh, economic understanding to know what's going on yeah. to know that okay even though this is my situation i can still look at someone else and say my life is different to them yeah. i can see homelessness i can see poverty i can see single parent households i can see people who have not had the best upbringing you sis was born in grew up in hitchin hitchin okay. is a hitchin is a place in uh, Hertfordshire, and it's a predominantly white background so you are born in middle class england with two parents who are police officers your sister is in the military of course you're not going to understand the struggles other people have but it's one thing for you not to understand and it another thing to and it's another thing for you to, call, to speak on it that's my issue like nobody asks you and do you know what it is yeah when I, I, towards the end she said something like and even if um, I didn't have anything, um, I'll make sure I work hard enough because she says something that I'll do anything to get there. Woulda, now, coulda, no, no, shoulda. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. But then when we have our black boys now selling drugs, yeah, mm-hmm. obviously because they're trying to do... What, what, what did she say towards the end? Remember she said something like, and if I don't have... She said, um, we're all raised in different ways and we do have different financial situations, but I do think if you want something enough, you can achieve it. And she, and she goes, it depends how bad... You didn't put it in there, but she said something like, it depends how bad you want it and how bad you're willing to get it. Did you remember that part? when she said it she, yeah now my thing is when people, when you say things that like, oh it depends how bad you want it and she said she also said i'll do anything she said i'll do anything to get to where i want to be at mm-hmm. and that's why we have guys in the hood young black boys joining gangs selling weed and doing all these things and then with the same people to turn around and say why are you doing that but then mm-hmm. people like money money saying do whatever you can do what you need to do to, to make it and it's like okay but when people are robbing your house they were also doing what they know no, no no but people were doing what <laughs> no but they were robbing their house to make extra income why do people rob because they need money mm-hmm. but then you saw the, the effects it had on you so what are you talking about why are you talking about do you get what i mean so clearly what you're saying doesn't make sense you can't it's so ignorant and it, it really highlights how she was brought up 
honestly it was and, and on top of that it's not something that she hasn't said before it's something that she already said that oh yeah you know i mentioned it in another in another conversation i had and people were backlashing it but it doesn't change the fact that i feel like you do have the same 24 hours you know beyonce's got the same 24 hours bruv what are you talking can we sing and dance like beyonce no, but, and that's another thing everybody has different gifts like what are you talking about what are you talking about honestly one thing i would take from that the only thing i would take from that is that there is opportunity to escape poverty. There is opportunity to escape. Um, if, if you are not happy with your life and you've had a bu- upbringing and you don't want to live like your parents and you don't want to experience what your parents been, there is opportunity. But it's not as easy as she's making it out. Someone said something very, very interesting and it's like, who do you think has a better university experience? Yes, thank God, we're in a country where university is free. But who do you think has a better experience? Somebody that l- lives in university and has... B- university and bearing in mind university only they cover the um the the accommodation fees but in terms of anything else when even books some of the books in university are, are like free. 100 pounds yeah. not just as free fuck off money yeah when i went to university some of my books were 150 fucking pound so on top of that having to pay for books pay for rent pay for rent pay for food pay for food and, and also for, social networking and social, and so social, you at least mentally because stay because, away because because the university like to push um um, yes, Society. we should be uh, societies and social life, but society costs money, and that money is not in uh, in the in the government you SFE still that need they're to giving us. Dress clothes because you know we wearing clothes every single day to uni. Uh-huh. So you can imagine this. You can imagine this. Whose experience is better? Somebody that has to obviously bearing in mind that's what we deal with. Somebody that has to work and work a part time job. Yeah. 12, 12 or sixteen hours a week, plus go to university. Or somebody that just can focus on their studies and mommy and daddy sending them money every month. Of course, the person where you, you you have no worries. You're just there to enjoy. You're just it. there to work. You don't have to worry about where your money's coming from. You work, a lot of times we joke about uni and we joke about oh yeah, in the me we have to eat in the but it's real life shit. No, it actually is. Though. It's real life shit. Where what? we'll just be eating bread and bread and butter. We'll be eating bread bread butter and water. In uni, that's all I ate. Uni first year I had bread. And that's how, and that's exactly why I started YouTube. I needed, I needed extra income. I was having bread, butter, no bread, chocolate spread, and juice, and that's why I became so big. Like it's real life. No, no, but it's actually real life, and I feel like people just open their mouths to talk, and it's not like you can't it's just say not that. It, Molly, and especially I, in Molly, like as much as I respect her as a person, like your circumstances are so different, so different, and it, and it, t- to be honest, this really highlighted it exactly the issues that when you have people on these platforms a lot of and, and i'm sure there's a lot of people that are going to agree with molly may because they come from that background they come from that middle class background where it's like oh yeah we have to just work hard and get on with it no and another thing is well, people don't know the value of life this is what i wanted to say yeah mm-hmm. there's some people that let's say let's say there's joe and then there's ben yeah mm-hmm. you guys can do the exact same thing like exact same thing and joe might succeed and 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 ben ben might not people need to understand life isn't guaranteed Absolutely. Like people think, okay, just because people have gone to uni, got a degree, a first class, and not got a job. Facts. Like even what Molly May said in general, you're not God. Like I'm not like you. Oh, you're not the universe, or you're not whatever people believe in. Mm-hmm. Do you get it? Working hard doesn't mean you're going to become successful. There's something yeah. called luck. People yeah. believe in luck. There's I believe in favor, and there's literally like I feel like everybody nepotism as well. Yeah. Do you get it? Nepotism. Like so. It's not about working hard. It's literally about how lucky. Let me just put it this way. How lucky you are. Because some people will work. Like, I've seen people. Look at our parents. Our parents worked hard when they came to this country. They were Mm -hmm. slaving and putting in extra hours. But when you're working in an environment whereby it's your caps to how much you can. Your caps to, I don't know, like, your caps in terms of you're not going to pass this stage. What can you do? Even even with the hard work that... that, um our parents face they were already capped because they didn't speak english see we uh, funny enough i always my aunt is always like you know you're so lucky that the fact that you even have an english accent there was that i have an auntie who um who um does project management and she's been a project manager secretary for like for like 15 years yeah and she she's more than qualified but she, she feels like because when she goes into these big meetings she can't speak the language and not to say that she's any less intelligent, but because English is not her first language, she's capped. Being our skin black, color. our skin color, we are capped. You cannot tell, there are people who are more talented than Molly May. Molly May is a white, blonde, English woman. 
she already her face alone is privilege and again and maybe she did work hard the slave no that she slave, no that. one is denying that but you cannot tell me that you if if i as a black woman put in the same work that you did we would get the same results because thank you. that's bullshit thank you for even saying that thing about her face you're also a pretty woman i'm so sorry to say but there's some people that are not aesthetically pleasing to the eye I want to say conventional. I think everybody is beautiful, but there's a conventional okay, beauty, right. the stand, the, the the universal standard. standard yeah. yeah, you're right. It's fake. Like that's what. Like you might. Yeah, you don't meet the standard of beauty. Mm -hmm. How how are twenty four hours the same? Because there's pretty privilege that mm -hmm. works. Whereby you can you can turn up to a brand, and they're like, you know what? Perfect. We're gonna pick you, and then somebody else has to work fifty times harder. In fact, they're never gonna they're never even gonna look at you. Same thing as being a black woman. Yeah, being black, automatically. Mm, Mm. as a white woman that's that's why her comment doesn't it actually doesn't make it sense it doesn't it's, make sense whether it's you have so 24, I don't. I, I personally feel like in life yeah, it's not about how hard you work mm -hmm. it's about working smart mm -hmm. agreed whereby it's the thing whereby like let's say I want to now work with a company a company might not care if I'm uploading 50 times a week but it's how I present myself it's being smart about the situation mm -hmm. it's the same thing like it's about working smart you can put on all the hours you want but I feel like if something isn't for you, it isn't for you. And I feel like it's the same thing as grace and favor. Like, if if I'm not destined to be an an athlete, I can train all I want, but I still it's not, not your step, destiny. I will not step foot on that pitch. It's not your destiny. So what she said really doesn't make sense. I feel, and I personally feel like some people, like unfortunately, were not. Look how many people. They, look how many rich people they are. There's ten percent in in the UK. The rich people, mm -hmm. ten percent. Tell me, is it only them ten percent that are working twenty four hours? Even them people, the ten percent of the richest people in, in in the UK, it's because it's in their bloodline. You know what's even funny when you look when you even look at the the, the richest people in in the UK. I remember, and I found this quite sad that even in, in even when you look at the women, um, generally, I'm not sure if this is in the UK specifically or even America, that majority of women who are who are billionaires. Um, is because of divorce settlements. So because they married rich, a lot of them, and when the divorce settlement, they now became billionaires. Or you have people who are, um, it was the aerocracies, aerocrostatics. What, what does that mean? So, so basically, they come from royal, rich, yeah. rich families that somebody dies and the money gets passed over. So even even when you're even looking at the 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 statuses of people who are rich, a lot of them are not self made. A lot of them are not. And Molly May, you're talking about 24 hours. Like, I'm so, that just annoys me but because... And the thing is, of course, like, again, your situation is so different because, again, I give it to her. Sis did work hard before Love Island. Mm -hmm. But the platform, that platform put you on already cuts out a lot of... It's like now the 24 hours you're working is to even build already on what you already have. Some mm -hmm. people are literally start, starting start from the scratch, ground yeah. up. You can't say your 24 hours are the same. When you have a few things to at least keep you going. And not just that, do you know, for you to even to even say, oh yeah, I, I started it was, you know, I already had a platform. Because when you think about it, because now I'm starting to realize how much, like, how expensive it is to even try and do this influencer thing. But for the clothes you have to buy. The cameras. For the cameras. When you came on Love Island, you had a whole set of veneers, babe, at 22 years old. Do you know how much fucking veneers are? You spent 2,000 pounds on your teeth. Your set up. Your set up, your cameras, everything to do YouTube. When like, you look at people like Chunks, when they're, when they're setting up, though, you could see the room and stuff they were saying, the money where you probably had this nice house, this nice little bedroom. You had this little cute camera. camera. You had money for a horse. And iPhone, so fiber people, Japan for Don't Jealous Me was filming on a, on, on a computer back on a com in the day. On the, on the laptop On the laptop screen. webcams, on the little webcam like, with his little headphones. You, you probably imagine. had a nice camera, so you can't say the 24 hours are the same. You it's not the can't. same. You definitely have to acknowledge that you are privileged because it's fucking, it's ex, it's, but it's fucking expensive. She tried to acknowledge it. She said it, and I didn't understand. But then, no, you, you don't. You didn't, you, say, but, you didn't understand. You didn't understand. And then you add all that, all the rest that you added. It literally erases everything mm -hmm. you just said. But yeah, shout out Molly Mado. Like, big up your thing. It, the thing is, it's, it's interesting because I, I'm sure a lot of a lot of these influences, and especially now, where it's like before, it was interesting because I kind of felt like growing up that when you had uh, me as a black woman, I never saw white influencers. There was almost a weird divide. I grew up with uh, Patricia Bright, Jenny Jenkins, um, who else did I, with a lot of like, the, you know, the Uche, Uche, and it's only now that I'm growing up that there's kind of been a, a kind of merge where yeah. I'm seeing everybody. But then you have these, inf and I'm sh sure you have a lot of these white influencers that have these conservative, is it is it right wing or left wing mindsets where they feel a certain way about a certain demographic immigrants minorities yeah but it wasn't an issue to have those mindsets prior because it was like a us 
and them. them. Yeah. Like I know that recently this week uh, there was a situation with a with a very popular that Ellie, YouTuber yeah. Ellie Ellie Darby, um, and um, a couple of her old tweets resurfaced. Sis, that wasn't that long ago. That was 2011. I still remember 2011. 2011. A lot of people. She was 16 years old. You're a big woman. So for anyone that's listening that doesn't know, there was a there's a there's a popular YouTuber here. Um, I believe she has around 600,000 subscribers, um, on YouTube. And in 2011, she made some outlandish tweets, um, for uh, a lot of people. Indian people, Jewish people, disabled people. Sis just came for everyone. She said, "You're all broke. You're all fat. You're all disabled. She and you're said all it, 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 like it was actually. I don't want to like saying things like." the indian smell like things like that it's just a bit i'm gonna read I, I would i would let me let me see if i could find some because when i i was talking to my people on um on tiktok and we were and we were literally reading the whole thing and we were like what is this and and you know a lot of people's excuses that oh yeah she was 16 when That's she said it excuse. when i was 16 i wasn't calling anyone a smelly person on the bus no can i tell you something uh -huh. i feel like there's also a difference between we, let me tell you this no one's perfect we all have bad thoughts like we all have bad thoughts like in general mm -hmm. that we might like even subconsciously come up but mm -hmm. i feel like it's one thing to think something and it's another thing to say it and there's another thing to at least type it like you done wrote that out yeah looked at it and said raw like this makes sense and sent and sent it do you get mm -hmm. what i mean like this whole thing of asian smelling yeah it's not it's nothing new yeah like let's just call it spade a spade she, this is what she said so she said she just this this is, is this is bad she straight said i hate polish people and indians really um, another tweet here says, so I hope the Polish That's a bit mad to say. driving my bus this morning who nearly kicked me off because I didn't have my pass crashes when he drops me off at school. Um, what? Not really in the best mood to be learning out some Indian music beep want to go to bed no, she's um, it was really really bad she also made some really terrible comments on um a disabled people um that's mad. Talk, disabled she said that about it was a lot of fat phobic things that her her mum had said something like um when you see fat people you have to give them a dirty look um because it will make them feel bad about themselves and they'll they'll lose weight so they'll you're really helping them out it was bad. Her tweets. This is her mad. tweets. Honestly, I've seen a lot of tweets resurface, but I think these were one of the, the worst, worst ones I've, I've seen. No, that's what Filthy. I'm saying. Like, this, this one thing to think something because this whole thing of Asian smelling, yeah, is something mm -hmm. you, you used to even. She hear, didn't even yeah? say that. It wasn't. It, it, was, it was. I Indians. hate them. She said no. straight up, I hate. I hate. No, Polish. no, no. She said Indian smell somewhere, right? Let me. But let my me thing find. is, for people to even you like the fact that people used to say that first of all is disgusting. Like, because mm -hmm. that's just wrong. But again, to type something out and to say it, like it's one thing to think something, but to say something just is just this is just nasty. What was I gonna say? Like how? No, you were talking about you see you, you were talking about you see this whole growing up thing with the white influences and and us being mm -hmm. two separate things. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think what changed here, yeah, white people started or these white white influences started to try to copy the black girl image and that's what I feel like created yes, the merge. Yes, you're because right. Because there was, I feel like we used to look, they used to, we were very like, mm, mm, mm. but now they wanted the, 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 our features, our personalities, all wow. of this. That's actually what created the merge. It's true. There definitely is, uh, and I know a lot of- a And lot then of I think maybe with the black people, we, we try to like maybe get the white people aesthetic. Do you know like that nice? I don't think it's the aesthetic. I think it was because the white influence was making money. Oh, okay, so we kind of have to, we have we, to kind of go bro, into the, let, true. like, even now, w like, do you see the, the, the gap, the pay gap between what white influencers are being played compared to the black girls? And I don't, I, I, I don't get it. I personally feel like there's something that black people carry that's just like, raw, like, the energy, the, I don't know. Back in the day, it was the white girls that were getting the deals. It was the white girls that were getting the camera thing. Obviously, now it's it's whether whether it's a real thing or not. It's cool to be inclusive now. Everybody wants to be inclusive. <laughs> but even the inclusivity really isn't inclusive. Do you know what they do? They chuck one black person, one staple darky, and then one mixed race girl, <laughs> one Asian. And then they'll say it's inclusive. They will, and then there'll me. be like fifty white people, and then they'll say it's inclusive. And, and they'll be like, "One love, <laughs> one love." Like it's actually, all, it's all, it's all performative. I definitely, I'm. Do you know what? I'm not gonna lie. I'm kind of happy this stuff is because then it will teach other people a lesson. Yeah. We are not saying that you, you have to. Um, we're, we're not. We're not asking for you to put BLM in your in your fucking yeah. bio. But I feel like there needs to be an, a, 
what's the word? I think there needs to be a level of consciousness yeah. that these white, white uh, influencers and just people generally have of the other side. Yeah. And again, again, I don't want to say that there's some white girls that have also suffered. They've also been through some stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, Mummy yeah. was a crackhead. Yeah. Daddy was an alky. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying for the ones who are brought up in middle class, who don't understand what it lives is to be the other side. <coughs> I think it's important for them now to have some sort of education on that, <laughs> so they don't go online and say stupidness. You, you might probably don't like. Does money may have been like black friends that maybe she personally? I don't know. All the black people. Honestly, I find it interesting. Since she left Love Island, was it not all the black people with all the all the black people and the uh, immigrants of that show? She's not friends with because she was she 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 went with uh, Mora and Molly May. You know, I think I believe her one. Your one day was there. Um, there was also another girl that I believe is is an immigrant. She's like an Arab babe. Yeah. And um, who else was there? And um, the mixed race girl Amber. Yeah. They went their own way. All the all the black all the immigrants went one side. All the white girls went that's the other what I'm side. Like, and that that's that's the thing as well. These white girls, more time, they don't even they don't know black people. Like they don't, they know, don't know them. them. It's like hi hi hi, and it stays there. But then when things like this happen, you would know that your friend Shaniqua should have helped you. Do you get it? And this is why I know, but this is why it's important to actually know different cultures and where people Absolutely. come from. Absolutely. I don't think anyone should be segregated to one culture. I'm I'm pretty much friends with every fucking body. Or if not, just I love the black show. girls, I love the white girls, I love the Asian girls, I love the hijabis, I love the gays, I love everyone. Yeah. I think it's important I think it's so, so important. It's it, it's it's human nature because especially with what when you're working in media you are going to work with people from all over, over the, the world yeah. you need to be able to learn to communicate with people and to understand and to understand where they're coming yeah, from their exactly i think that's what it's about because of course she might she, i think she of course like i don't come think on she, yeah she obviously likes black people and stuff i feel like in order to understand them you need to kind of be in them do you get it's what very, i mean what she said was very very ignorant and i'm before i was using an excuse and i'm like oh yeah you know she's young but you're not young babe you're if you're old enough to have a creative director role that's worth six hundred thousand pounds you're old enough to understand the struggles of other people and yeah. to resonate with that and yeah. to be able to articulate yourself well and i feel like it's important to understand that especially if you're in that role because how then then even things like when you're making clothes and all these things you can take people's cultures and things like that into consideration yeah, because th- that's the thing dude she probably, she probably doesn't have to communicate with them unless it's with camera <laughs> like I, really and truly all the people that are all the all the indian workers that are packing the clothes <laughs> do you think you're gonna are you gonna be greeted are, are, they, are they in your main in your in your head office no they're in the they're in the factories it's working true. slaving you ain't got to talk to them unless you want to do some sort and of I think promo that is the problem people in, in in these high places they have no regard for other people because they don't know where people came from and i feel like if people that were working these big big jobs kind of understood people's struggles i feel like they'll be more inclined to help out same way as that guy the, the, the footballer what's his name the one i was feeding the, the homeless um, Rashford. Rashford, 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 yeah. Because he knew, because he knew the struggle. The moment he had the platform, he was literally he was able out. to help out. But there's a lot of people sitting in high places that haven't lived the life or mm-hmm. don't want to know what the life is like. Because some people, I don't feel like it takes you having to live and struggle to know people are actually struggling. Let me help yeah, out. Yeah, it's literally having to have that care in your heart to find out what people are going through. Empathy, empathy, definitely putting yourself in someone else's shoes is yeah. so so important. We're not asking you to go and and do um what's that what's that stupid show called where you would swap lives. <laughs> Um, um, wife swap. Yeah, we're not asking you to go do wife swap and go and suffer for one week. That's not what we're saying. But just be more empathetic about what you say because if, even in general, like imagine you're working your ass off for someone to say that, it can even make you feel the shit about yourself. You like, just want to jump out of your you window. You might be thinking, "Ram, am I not doing enough? And I think that's the thing, like acknowledge that even if you're working five hours, people actually have some real life stuff going Absolutely. on. Absolutely. We are not. We can't spend 700 pound on a camera to start YouTube because and not everybody that starts YouTube feed. blows it's people that have been on YouTube for that's, that's my point people have been on YouTube for years uploading every week and they it's true and they blown. haven't blown it's true it's true I how agree. many people are, that's, and that's my point like you can work so hard but if it's some people just don't have the luck so what if you keep if it doesn't work you try something else how much money are you going to invest like not everybody has money to keep to keep investing in different things to find mm-hmm. out what works facts because that's another advice oh keep trying different things to see what works who has that money who has the money who has that time People like, do you get what I mean? Like, money that people can actually be spending, like, money, time people can can be spending getting an actual job. They can't just be putting getting entertainment in their interest in mm-hmm. this. People need to be fed. That's it. There's there's food. There, there's mouths to feed. People. Some people. There's some children have their parents to actually take care of, and you're telling them, "Oh, do something. Keep trying until you find what works for you." Life doesn't work like that. Absolutely. And I just literally want to close on this. Like, I just, I, I, I personally, I, I love 
everyone. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a definitely a people person. Yes, yeah, and I want when people hear this. Yeah, we can talk about it from a sub, from a from an objective viewpoint. But subjectively, the people that are working hard and slaving, it's very very hurtful to hear because yeah, you're thinking, "Am I not doing enough?" And I just want to let you know that bitch, you's doing enough. Okay, you were doing more than enough. Keep motherfucking like going, keep doing what you're doing. I'm, keep I'm not gonna be the people to promise that one day you're gonna make it. But I feel like <laughs> no, because that's the thing about life. Like people don't keep. I'm not saying that one day you're gonna make it. But I feel like you're still going to make change. Do you get what I mm-hmm. mean? Like, I'm not saying working that job for ten, just because now you get ten thousand pounds invested and you're gonna make it. No, that's what I'm saying. Like, realistically, realistically, life doesn't work like that. But I'm gonna say, keep doing what you're doing. Like, I feel like life isn't about hitting the jackpot and ending up in Times Square. It's about being better than who you were yesterday. And be ha- being happy as well. And I feel like another thing is well, making it isn't measured by mon. What do you call it? Monumental. What's the word? Monetary. Mon- no, monetary things. Yeah. Go. On. Yeah. Like success isn't measured by mo- monetary things. If for ex- if you're able to put the lights on in your house, I feel like that's something people people like money may, for example, you pitch yourself in. If you want it bad enough, you can make it bad. Me- what what, bad what is the definition of happiness? It's interesting because I remember I was working in Tesco's uh, when I was seventeen, and I was really I was really sad. Mm. I hated Tesco's. I was mm. working behind the deli counter. Mm. Very, very annoying place. Cutting bread. And I remember, I thought everybody hated it like me. I thought everyone hated this job yeah. and we were just there. And I remember I was talking to one woman and she was slightly on the spectrum. I believe she was a bit autistic. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I wanted someone to rant with. And I was like, Ugh, don't you, do, you, do you like this job? You know? Yeah. And she was like, yeah, I do like it. I like it. I said, really? I was quite taken aback. She goes, uh, you know, her boyfriend was working on the checkouts. She was working on the the bakery, and she was really happy. She goes, yeah, you know, um, I, uh, you know, I, my boyfriend comes to my house. I go to his house. I work, you know, uh, five five days a week, and I get to go on holiday. Holidays. I said, what holidays do you go to? She goes, I go to Great Yarmouth with my parents. Oh. She was so lovely. And I think that was, and why I remember it is because everybody's definition of happiness is it's different. different yeah. M- people's definition of happiness is not always to have the Lamborghini. It's not always to have the, the skyscraper. Now, sometimes someone's definition of happiness is to just be loved or to have a boyfriend or to, to have the shepherd's pie at the end of the evening yeah. on their way from home or to have a massage every now and again or to go to on a caravan trip um, to, to Cornwall once a year with their family yeah. members so people need to uh, people should not fit their definition of happiness into Onto the us, one yeah. thing being the multi-millionaire t- t- there are some people who are not multi-millionaires and they are and happy. happy there are some people who earn 40k a year and are happy because and there's some people that are billionaires are now committing suicide but that's the thing i feel like it's pushed as those successes work hard so one day you can get this and i and i just want to say like one thing is I feel like being appreciative of the small you have because with me, I've always said like, I I don't know what I don't I don't feel like I'll be happy if I now hit billions here. Yeah? I'm making billions, but I have no one to share it with. Mm. I don't have my parents. I don't have my family. And I feel like I feel like one thing I want to say to the viewers is is create happiness in in the situation that you're in now. Absolutely. Some people don't have heating at home yet, yeah? but they are filled with love and that keeps them warm. Warm. And some people have millions, but you're you're in one big house by yourself. By yourself. You can just you, hear your echoes you, you in the wall. And, and even you have your, you, you're asking your maid to stay extra, but no, she has a family to go to. Do you mm-hmm. get what I mean? Like, this is things that you actually see day to day whereby these celebrities want people like their maids and their assistants to stay, but they also have a family to get to. So I want people to always remember that like, create happiness in what you're in, in the situation that you're in, in the storm you're in. Create happiness. Like, don't, 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 don't live on a one day. One day I'm gonna be happy when I get this and I get this because you'll happiness, forever be chasing happiness. You'll forever be chasing. You have happiness. to just make it, make it in what you have now. That's what I want to say. I feel that, but thank you so much, guys. That was hot topics of the week. And of course, if you have anything that you want to add to hot topics of the week, make sure that you follow us on Twitter, CMT Podcast, Instagram, Cocktails and Takeaways, and also subscribe to us, Cocktails and Takeaways. We have a good yeah. time. Ow. <laughs> Question of the week. I'm really excited about this one. What's the question? Okay, I got you. So basically, all the bad boys and the bad girls answer a poll on Instagram and they give me their feedback Mm -hmm. and all their insights on the question. So are you ready? Mm -hmm. And I do this every week where I will ask someone if they're ready and my ass never is. 
So bear with me. <laughs> <laughs> Where is it? Okie dokie. And a big shout out. Someone actually someone actually um chose question of the week this week. And I will just read out I'll just read out who it is. So I wanna say a big shout out to Amin Ami five five R. I'm guessing that's a me R for question of the week this week and for picking that. So mm-hmm. question of the week this week is would you be okay with your partner selling solely for foot picks on OnlyFans? Feet picks. Is it feet picks or foot picks? Feet. feet. Oh yeah, feet plurally. Feet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, I'll actually be down for it. I don't think it's bad. Like, I actually, I wanted to do that. I, I had a partner, and I said to him, can I sell my feet pictures on to people? And he was like, no. I'm like, why? He's like, oh. His reason was more of just, like, the fact that, oh, somebody's going to be masturbating. Wait, what am I saying? Are you for it or against it? I'm I'm both. Why are you against it? Because it's, it's, it's an hour sexual object. I feel like, my thing is, my thing is not what it is. My thing is the sexualization of it and would i want my partner to be sexualized in the way in the same way he'd be sexualized as if he was showing his dick but that's as if different he was sh- why is it different because that's actually a penis that's actually that's something that's actually reproductive do you get what i mean okay or his obviously it's different with with guys they don't have that much to sexualize i mean people sexualize guys hands people sexualize guys legs but I don't- but that's the thing though i feel like other than if unless it's your breast mm-hmm. your your vagina and your bum as a woman you can also sell if it's if it's eye pictures do that if it's lips do that if it's hair yeah, do I'm that for it. do you get it i'm like, for it for me not for him make though. your money i like, don't think man uh, to be honest yeah i'm i'm talking about it as if my boyfriend was can my boyfriend sell feet pics yeah he can make us some money so what? i don't think i'd be down for it but he shows his feet in general for free if you're on holiday he's wearing sandals i don't think men should be showing their toes some men's toes are dead <laughs> Exactly. You know, I personally, you know, some of them have some black toes, but I personally feel like why not? Like, I, that's me though. I women, personally... like when I see about the feet face about women, I'm not mad about it. Honestly, would I? Let me be honest. Yeah, hell yeah. If if someone said, Joyce, I want to take feet pics of you, and I'll pay you money. Fuck it, I'll do it. A woman was selling her fart. Oh my god. So why did not? I, I told this. Sto- did I tell you the story where this guy was? This guy sent me money to cuss him out. <laughs> Because he's telling guys actually like that they like like rude women. He ta- he sent me money. He was like, I like the abusive side of you. No, the abusive money, the abusive like language. So like, f- you you will call him a fucking bitch. And you stupid bastard. Yeah, men love that. Men actually love. Men actually think it's a. He sent me two hundred pound. <laughs> to abuse him. To just voice them, you're so fucking. You're Hi, good for nothing. Um, whoever you're you are, good for nothing. Maggie Mayhem underscore underscore. I will cuss you the hell out for free. <laughs> for free, like I don't even need no money. Like I, I got a lot. Of he, my said, he was sending. He what? sent me bank to cuss them out. Do you know some men have money to spend? And I saying, couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it when he said it. I said, "Huh?" Men actually have money to spend, and you expect me not to say. If it wasn't for if it wasn't for the fact that someone's gonna like let's say master being ejaculated because of God, I, <laughs> I would sell my feet pics in a second because men sexualize you anyway. They sexualize you anyway. 100%. Do you get what I mean? Anyway, like Joyce, you can just be sitting there and the guys thinking about fifty things he wants to do to you. So let me make some money. That's the thing. Like especially men, men are so stupid. So I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play off your intelligence and make some bank off it. Yeah, Why I don't think. Now? I don't think. For me, I would sell my feet pics. But what the point I was trying to make earlier is that why is it that some of some of our parts it's okay yeah we can sexualize this part of our body but no we can't sexualize this part when our breast is out there's a problem when our bum is out there's a problem. that's the point i was trying to make but for me girl make your mother for shit no coins. but that's the thing it's also but, I, but it also depends on the society you're in because so let's, exactly. car, some women walk around with no breast it's I mean, weird with, with, it's with, weird it, it, it just their breast it's, it's weird so you're telling me that if it was a normal thing if if the if the sexualization of ankles let's say was a thing. You had to start covering them. You would have to start covering yeah. them wearing socks even though it's like 200 yeah. degrees. Like, it's weird. It's, it's mad. Weird. And, and it's so, that's what I'm saying, it's actually crazy because then we're going to keep having to change our clothes and change our clothes and change our clothes. Because at one point, I don't think, bums wasn't sexualized. It wasn't. Now and all of a sudden, bums sexualized. It was nasty. It was nasty. So girls actually I remember, there was some, I remember what, when Nini Leaks, Nini Leaks had a 
butt reduction. That's why her bum was so inside. Because back in the day, having a bum was not cool. Yeah, because you looked apparently fat. Because it made you look fat, so girls would have butt reduction. And But now it's a thing. So now, all of a sudden, now we have to cover our bums. We can't wear certain things. But before it was... That's what I'm saying. It's like, so if one day, like, the ankle thing or becomes nose, a trend... Or the eyes become a thing, I have to start wearing sunglasses. We have to start like wearing these. sunglasses. But that's what I'm saying. Muslim, Mad. Muslim women now cover their, cover their eyes I, as well. They, they put, like, this little veil on top. I just don't, I feel like so how how until when what if now the garment starts becoming sexualized what do we do then what do we do then what do we do then it's just like it just changes but I'm I am all for sis however you want to make your shakoins make it make your shakoins if you want to sell your toes sell your toes I I'm, I'm confused as to men said because I I've seen some boys football feet and it's dead boys have dead feet I've, there's not many guys that I know that have sexy feet so wait girls are the ones that are buying the feet huh. So women also like guy feet as well. I don't know. Do you think g- girls have foot fetishes? I actually, maybe some do. You know, do you know girls be so nasty? Like girls are nasty. Like, but we just don't. I feel like girls actually, when it comes to sexualizing, might actually maybe worse than boys. You know, but we just hide it. Who? Nah, sorry. Can someone help me? Who's liking? Who is? Who as a woman has a foot fetish on men's foot? Not that if you're gay, That's men's you foot. Don't know. You actually, Women that's have, fucking bad. Us Sorry. women have weird fetishes. Though. Men's feet. That's why every time they're in the bedroom, they're always wearing socks <laughs> because their <laughs> most of their feet are dead. No, but us women have some mad fetishes as well, though. That's what I'm trying to say. We have some mad fetishes. I what don't have a weird. Do, have, hmm. do I have a weird fetish? Oh my god, I kind of don't. I kind of like a bit of boobies. I like fat boys. What? You know, like fat boys. Bye. Like you know when boys have Bye. just a little bit. No, that's not too, where I leave the a chat. Little, just a little bit of boobies, not too much. A little bit of boobies. You don't. You, you don't like chunky boys with a bit of boobies. Nope. nope, I don't like chunky guys at all. I don't. Ga- I don't I like love guys. Me a fat boy, you know. I don't like guys that me. has a belly. I don't like. I, don't I love a belly. No <laughs> <laughs> belly, nah, Ooh, I'm no. about to dive in. Nah, Listen, man. I love a belly, you know. That means you have the same belly size. I will rub your, nah. I will rub your belly. I will rub your belly. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. there's one guy, in, there's one guy I interacted with. Let me use that word. I interacted with that had a belly, and I promise you, every time I could feel, like, let's say I'm hugging him, I could feel the belly. I will want to vomit. Like, <laughs> like I feel, like, <laughs> you can feel the belly press on you, like hell no. Nah. Like even the other day, my friend was like, this him and his pot belly, like I can't. I Big can't. belly boy, good evening. I can tell yeah, that your chicken, chicken is seasoning, seasoning flavor. Listen, I will, season, no. I will season that chicken and I will feed it to you. Good nah, night. Child, I'm going to burn that chicken. I can't, I can't be with I love anybody. a fat boy, you know. I nah. do. But when they're tall, they have to, you can't be that short you're and naked, stout. I can just see a belly. This is not swing, hell no. swi- s- Swing. What's that Jesus, thing? You can't be real. Let your hang glow. What's it? Jesus, hang glow. I'm so dead serious. I like fat boys. I do. If I had to choose between a six pack, a six pack V neck boy and a nice chocolate fat boy, me like the fat one. Me want the fat one. I am picking the V line boy because I'm so no, sorry. I'm choosing I'm the fat one. I'm choosing the so fat one. So when I'm actually. Are you are you a bitch? No. So when I'm touching your belly, like I'm rubbing. Have your, you your ever super. have you ever been body to body with someone with just muscle? It's like bone. It's like you're just boning. I no, need some. No, 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 I need, need the... some cushioning. <laughs> I need no, some cushioning. I have the cushion. But if it's nah. not too fat, people just no nah, hell no. Nah. Obviously, I had a I had a, a, a ex boyfriend that was quite he was slender, muscly, and I remember ew being in an intimate space with him and I remember I could feel his bone on my bruv why am I feeling your Mm. why am I feeling your what's it called your lemur (laughs) on my body your tender your tendons like why am I feeling your bones I'm so sorry because I'm cushiony enough I won't I love cushion I like I want to squeeze squash how does a fat man even carry you with his hands, the fuck. <laughs> just because someone is, just because somebody is fat, doesn't mean that they're not strong. When I talk about fat, I don't mean obesity city. I mean I like a chunky monkey. I would prefer a chubby boy with bit of boobies, a bit of belly, than what these six pack boys that when you're when their hugs don't even bang. 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I, nah. Have nigga. you ever hugged a guy with six pack? Yeah, and it's really that. I'd be in that hug nah, for real. No. When you hug a boy with meat, everything, you just feel so, so nah, I can't breathe. You just feel so squeezed. I can't breathe. Like, oh my God, hold me for a bit longer. It's I love like, you. Why are you a teddy bear? I don't know. I just feel like. Uh, it's like it's giving teddy bear. It's giving, it's giving cushion. It's giving feminine. It's giving cushion. Actually, that's, that, that that seems very like um gen, gen, whatever thing is. But I don't know. I just feel like it's not my thing. No, I, I feel love like it. the girl was supposed to be the, the, the cushy one. So you just want someone to be bony and muscular. So now I'm a jib babe. Know. I should be the guy that has belly. Hell no. Nah. No, nah, I love. Uh, listen, if you got a bit of belly, I love you. If you, if you, if you got if, a bit of boobies, got, I love you. If you got abs, just hit me up. If you got abs, get go to Maggie. <laughs> <laughs> Come over to my if side you because got, if you've got six pack and everything, go to Maggie. Yeah, no, hell no. But basically, when I'm looking at the poll, so 57% said yes, they'll be okay, and 43% said no. So it was very split. It was very, very split. So I will just read what people had to say. Right. Uh, Dami Zane said, it's just feet pics. Get that money, baby. Period. Um, Yamari JPEG said, I'm not attracted to men selling feet pics, so they sh- wouldn't be my partner. So nothing to say. So she's basically saying, I will never date a guy that sells feet pics. So why are we having this conversation? Yeah. Um, M. Flair said, if my girl needs money, ask me. Why run to OnlyFans? Don't worry, I got you, baby. <laughs> That's not the point, though. She, he just said, y'all niggas is broke. If anyone says, yeah, now niggas broke. No, nah, but I feel like that's also bad mindset. It's about making more money. It's about, yeah, you can never have too much money. Make more. Somebody said, J8 Hanna said, I know you didn't act J Huss because you didn't want to wake up as a supermom super bottle. And I went because I'm coming by the blood of Jesus. So what? <laughs> so what does J Huss say? Since- so obviously his his uh, baby mom um, sells feet pics and she was commenting saying that she made 18,000 pounds on feet pics and everyone should start coming for her. Sis, do your thing. As you should. Do your thing. But 18 grand, I thought she could have made more there. Pardon? 18 grand only. Only? Yeah, I feel like she should have made more money. Obviously, you lot don't know Maggie's rich. No, no, come on, 18 grand. Come on, 18 grand. For feet? That's a lot of money to just sew your foot, you know? After how long? I think she had to be honest yeah. I thought that as well because she did have it for time. That's what I thinking. remember before she said she made 10 grand. So only from then to now, it's only eight grand. But do you, sis, that's a lot of money. 80 grand is a lot of money. 80, Maggie, don't be, don't, don't be Maggie. I've Brown been, Biscuit I've said, been. making bread for us, why not? And um, Sam Sokonova said, the body is art. Art is to be displayed and praised. Do you actually get it? A lot of people forget that. Pay me my price. I'd be it was you very, my... very split. And somebody said, Dre Murder said, I wouldn't mind showing my man, she would, I wouldn't mind my man showing his dusty feet for money. <laughs> <laughs> no, but do you get it? Like, let's make some money out of it. I'm really interested to know if there's women. I mean, if there's women that have foot fetishes, because I don't know many men that have nice feet. I'm telling you, women have the weirdest fetishes. Like, w- women like things like their ears being licked and things like that. Yeah, but that's not a. F- uh, yeah, ears being licked is sick, but that's bi- that's standard. Like that's no, that's not standard. That's all earwax and 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 the and the. And the dirt Honestly, for you lot that don't know, Maggie is Maggie is a virgin. So everything is shocking. Everything is shocking to her. That's licking ears. That's that licking ears. Standard yeah. licking. Are you are you an animal? Licking You're licking somebody's side. ear. Why are you licking? No, tell me, yeah. Wait, How wait till you find out that people are licking people's assholes. Huh? Yeah, you're okay. talking about licking air. That's that's where, elementary. Where that's did, elementary. Where did you get from here to here? Yeah, lick inside my ear, baby. Yeah, but but that no, but do you know? Do you see how weird it is? How did you get from here to here? No, because you have to follow. So you do the, the kiss, then you now lead to the jaw. The jaw will now be the road to the ear. Do you get the road? The, the from the mouth, you now lead. To the road but side. why are you leaving the mouth why are you going to the ear like what's in here for you that you because need then you because you have to every you you kiss the ear you'll go to the neck you'll follow through like there's Hello, a journey there's, there's a journey you have to there's a process like so you, from the mouth to the ear from then you the now ear to, to the, the neck from the then the, you now work your to way the breast, to, from to the breast from the breast no 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 you miss the armpit you do the armpits ah! you will follow around people don't lick people's armpits people don't kiss people's armpits yes they do <laughs> sex is a bad thing Oh my love, sex, 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 sex. Yes, sex, they sex. do. <laughs> nah. What? People lick people's armpits. Sex was never that deep. I'm telling you, people. You're talking about armpits. People it, are licking people's assholes. It was never that deep. If it, people's are licking people, people are eat ass, yeah. You're weird. I'm, I'm so sorry. If you, I don't care if you've got your, your ass eating jokes because clearly you have, yeah. It I, is I weird. weird. <laughs> Let me say something. If you eat ass, yeah, that is weird. Do you know why that's weird? That's feces, bro. Like. 
Not why feces. Is, why is someone's bum hole? Not feces. No, but why? That's feces. Not feces. But why is someone's bum hole? What are you doing there? Like, what are you actually looking for? <laughs> Trez, what are you looking for in someone's bum? <laughs> Give me a response. The G spot. <laughs> <laughs> So I've heard. So I've heard. <laughs> so I've heard. The G spot. The so G spot will take you to someone's ass crack because you're yeah. looking for a G spot. The G spot can miss me. So you're not. What? You're not. You're not with it. Hell, you're you not know, with anyone licking your ear. If a guy licks my ass, yeah, that's the. I feel like unless maybe it's my husband, yeah, and then we're just trying to be freaky for the fun of it. Like I don't know. Let's say like something comes over us. We're like, do you know what? Let's find. I'll be scared of you. <laughs> Jays, you can respect a man that's licked up. Maggie's, Maggie's, Maggie's freak level is on three. No, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really freaky. I'm very traditional. Just kiss me on go. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to even ask you about that. How do you find being abstinent? How do you find celibacy? Like with a world where it's just full of sex, everybody, you listen to the radio, you're hearing pussy, pussy, vagina, 